The Moto X4 is a pretty good device and one that's worthy contender for your next smartphone if you're looking for a phone in the low 20 segment in India. This much we know from our review. If you haven't checked it out already, please make sure you do by following the link in the description below. However, the X4 is highlighted for its camera abilities too, especially considering how Moto has once again jumped on the dual camera bandwagon. Last time around, it wasn't too successful with the G5S Plus in implementing a proper dual camera setup. However, it seems different this time. This is Sandeep from Rev Atlas. Let's see how the Moto X4 fares when it comes to the cameras. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get the latest updates from us. Instead of going for a primary camera plus depth sensor combination, Moto has decided to go with a wide angle plus ultra wide combination with the X4. This particular combination is almost exclusively used by LG in their smartphones, so it is interesting to see another manufacturer take a shot at it. The X4 features a primary 12 megapixel camera with f2 aperture and a secondary 8 megapixel f2.2 camera with a wider field of view, 120 degrees to be precise. A 12 megapixel camera also has a 1.4 micron pixel size, which should give it an edge when it comes to low light performance. Coming to the actual image quality, the X4 is good. It takes pretty impressive photos in terms of the detailed result and is one of the best in the segment. The wide angle camera isn't as impressive when it comes to detailing or noise control. However, the field of view you get with it can give you some dramatic looking compositions if used well. Dynamic range is also pretty good and while regular photos may exhibit some limitations, most of those are overcome by the HDR mode. Only thing to note is that the HDR mode may be a bit slow at times and that can cause shakes and blurring unless you hold it steady. This is where the main issue lies. I don't mind if the phone takes some time to process the image after it's captured, but there seems to be some shutter lag even when you press the shutter button and there's even an issue with focus at times. Despite the dual pixel autofocus technology which is supposed to make everything much faster, the phone actually hunts for focus and sometimes even takes an off focus image at times. Performance under low lighting conditions aren't too good considering that noise does creep in despite the larger 1.4 micron pixel size. However, if you keep the pixel size aside, it's actually not too bad. But considering that Moto actually advertising the larger pixel size, it's not really up to the mark in terms of performance. Indoor lighting conditions are handled better, but low light, especially outdoors, are a bit noisy and can also see some color cast at times. There's a depth mode that can simulate a blur and bokeh effect. Users also have a slider that can control the amount of blur to be applied. If it's overdone, the resulting photos may look too soft and lack focus. However, if used correctly, it can give some interesting results as well. There's also a selective color mode that allows you to choose what color you want to retain, as well as the threshold and the camera cancels out all the other colors for you. Works decently well, but sometimes the effect can look artificial. The panorama mode is really good and it handles the stitching pretty well, as well as make sure that the dynamic range isn't affected much. However, it isn't too rich in terms of detail and has a height of just 1760 pixels, but is something that isn't too evident unless you pixel peek. The front facing camera is actually a 16 megapixel unit with 1 micron pixel size and while that's plenty of resolution to work with especially on a front facing camera, the images produced aren't actually too great. The main reason for this is actually the lack of proper focus as well as sharpness and detailing. If you actually pixel peep into the front facing images taken by the Moto X4 you'll notice that a lot of the details are quite mushy and the focus is also almost not always on point. You also have a front facing flash that can sort of help in low lighting conditions and that works pretty decently well, but there is still a lot of noise especially in low light conditions. Other than that the dynamic range is pretty good but if Moto actually worked on the algorithm I think that they can produce a much better image from the front facing camera itself. Video recording on the Moto X4 is supported in various resolution and frame rates. However only in the 30fps 1080p mode you get EIS. You can also opt for a higher frame rate with the 1080p 60 mode or a higher resolution with 4K 30fps mode. However, both these aren't as stable as the 1080p 30 mode which does a good job at stabilizing the video with EIS. 4K video does have a higher bitrate of around 50 Mbps compared to the 16 to 17 megabits per second for the 1080p videos but there isn't much of a difference in pure detail resolved itself really and many people would rather just stick to 1080p to get EIS. The front facing camera can also record 1080p videos at 30fps but again there's no EIS. The quality is pretty good and is one of the better ones in the segment. However the main issue I had with videos both front and back camera was that the audio sounded a bit robotic and seemed to have a strange reverb effect as well. 
Front-facing camera taking 1080p 30fps video on the Moto X4. Let me know how the overall stabilization is, as well as the detailing, the sharpness, and how it tracks focus as well. There's no EIS on this, but I would imagine that they could possibly roll it out with an update, considering that the same 1080p 30fps is available with EIS on the rear camera. So overall, I think the stabilization is the only thing that needs to be improved, but everything else looks pretty good from what I can see. But let me know what you guys think and how even my audio is being picked up as a whole. The X4 can capture slow motion videos with both cameras at the back. However, the regular camera can capture at 720p resolution, while the wide angle camera captures slow motion videos in a weird 6 is to 4 aspect ratio and a resolution of 720 by 480 pixels. There's also an issue with keeping the focus on since the camera seems to hunt for focus even if you lock focus prior to shooting and the overall bitrate is poor. There's even a face filter mode that's available both as a photo and a video which does a pretty good job at tracking your face and applying the mask onto it. However, in video mode your voice could potentially change and make you sound a bit like Darkseid. In terms of the face filters being used on the Moto X4, let me know how it is and there are a bunch of different face filters that you can apply onto your face. The Moto X4 is a pretty good performer when it comes to a camera. It isn't an outright showstopper in any way and in photo or video or any of the camera aspects and even though it's not a leader in anything, it can do many things pretty well. If you're looking for a casual shooter while at the same time a smartphone that performs well and looks good, then this may not be a bad choice to go for. That's it for the video guys, please leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section below. You can head over to the link in the description below to buy the smartphone for yourself. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next one.